Okay, welcome to part two of this lecture. Let's move on to um, contingency. The contingency theories are also known as situational theories, meaning it depends on the situation. What type of leadership is needed changes with the kind of situation the leadership needs to be applied to. We're looking at the context. This became um, more popular in the 70s and 80s and even in the 90s. Um, I believe that this is probably the most popular type of theory that we're, that is in use right now when it comes to leadership. Uh, some of these researchers looked at the processes by which leaders emerge in different circumstances and others looked at uh, ways in which leaders and followers uh, viewed each other, you know, in various situations. This is where the idea of leadership style came in, the belief that the style needed would change with the situation. Another way of putting that is that particular concept, contexts would demand a particular form of leadership. So the contingency approach is, uh, you look at it, you, there is the leader, there is the follower, and there is the situation. The traits and behavioral theories are what we would call a um, universalistic approach. That if you use these traits, you use these behaviors, you will get the outcomes that you want. That is performance, satisfaction among your followers, that kind of thing. The contingency approach is a little more complex. You look at the leader, the styles, the traits, the behaviors, yes, but also position power. You look at the followers. What are their needs? What is their maturity? What is their training? Um, what is the uh, cohesion among the, the followers? And then you look at the situation. The situation includes things like the environment, the systems, the tasks, the structure. All of those work together in a very dynamic process in order to get the outcomes that you want. It's not a simple do this and get that kind of uh, approach. These kind of models are really good because they make us think about what we're doing and if it's a, excuse me and if it's appropriate to the situation. Some of the issues with this approach is uh, that it does have a North American bias. There's a lot of evidence that suggests that uh, cultural factors influence the way that people respond to and carry out uh, leadership roles. There's also the concept that different patterns of leadership are linked with men and different patterns are linked with women. Again, we'll talk about this later on in the semester. The fourth area of theory is the transformational theories. These are theories around the visionary leader. Uh, what we're looking at here are leaders who appeal to uh, followers, uh, moving them towards a higher purpose, uh, something that goes beyond themselves. And so we're actually looking at leaders as change agents here. You can see by the bullets that uh, transformational leaders raise our levels of awareness, our level of consciousness about the significance and value of um, reaching certain goals. It they get us tra to transcend our own self-interest and uh, work for the sake of the team, the sake of the organization, or for some, some larger purpose. And if you're familiar with Maslow's hierarchy of needs, we see that transformational leaders expand us into the higher levels of uh, self-actualization um, beyond our own, our own uh, needs, our own individual needs. In all these theories we know that leadership involves influence, it involves intention, a personal responsibility, it involves change, it involves shared purpose, and it involves working with followers. The old paradigm of leadership was applied to the industrial age. It was stable, uh, control, competition, uniformity. The new, par the new paradigm is in the information age, empowerment, diversity. At a time 